Hello, everybody. It's so good to have you today for our midweek podcast, and we just want to welcome you. We are so happy that you've taken time out to listen today, and if you would, turn in your Bibles to Isaiah 65, Isaiah 65, verse 8. Isaiah 65, verse 8. I want to talk about the blessing in the cluster. The blessing in the cluster. The Bible says in Isaiah 65 and 8, Thus saith the Lord, As the new wine is found in the cluster, and one saith, Destroy it not, for a blessing is in it. So will I do for my servant's sake, that, I may not destroy them all. The blessing in the cluster. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for another opportunity to share your word today. God, help us see that, Lord, there is a blessing in all of the things that we see that are so dark and discouraging. Yet, Lord God, there's a blessing right in the midst of it all. And Lord, although the darkness and the wickedness deserve to be destroyed and the day is coming when you are going to call for judgment and righteousness and everyone's going to have to give an account for wickedness and darkness and sin and rebellion against God and and His holiness. Yet right now, you are holding back the judgment that should completely annihilate the face of this earth because there's a blessing in the cluster. There's something good in the midst of all the bad. And Lord God, we, we pray today that we could see that and take courage that you have a people. That is the that they are the apple of your eye. They you hold them in the palm of your hand, and even though there's a lot of bad things going on, there's some good things. There's some people that have accepted redemption through your blood, Lord. They've been redeemed, and Lord, you've got your eye on them and your hand on them and your anointing on them. You're preserving them because they are the blessed of the Lord. In the midst of all that is cursed, there is a blessing in the cluster, Lord. We thank you for that. Help us take courage today in what we study and what we learn from your word. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The blessing in the cluster. Now, what in the world are you talking about? Well, Isaiah was pointing out that there was a cluster that was absolutely ruined fit to be destroyed, but yet one steps in and says, don't destroy it, don't throw all of it away, for a blessing is in it. And this is what he says, for the sake of my servant. He said, so I will do for my servant's sake. I will spare the cluster for the blessing that is in the cluster. There's one precious grape that is in the cluster of sour, good-for-nothing grapes. There's one grape there, and for that one blessed person's sake, I'm going to spare the rotten bunch of this whole cluster. I'm not going to throw it all away but I'm going to spare it for his sake. Wow, what a statement. He said that I may not destroy them all. He said, I am not just going to, with one sweeping hand of wrath and indignation, I am not going to just wipe out the race of humanity. I am not going to just send one sweeping, annihilating act of, of judgment and wrath upon everybody. But he says there is a blessing in the midst of all of this, this unrighteousness and wickedness and darkness. He says, and I'm going to spare this old sinful and ungodly and, and demonic 
world that has been overrun by demonic forces and forces of of hate and rebellion against God and any any likeness of God they have rebelled and rejected against and come against with hate and ungodliness. They're ready to cast out the very name of God, the very name of the Lord Jesus Christ, anything that represents His likeness or is a symbol of his 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 godness and and righteousness they're ready to 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 burn down and throw away and get rid of to dis, to deface and to to destroy this is a nothing more but a an onslaught of the devil he has his demonic forces has possessed the heart of unbelievers with the cloud of darkness they are dark they don't understand the truth they can't know the truth because they've allowed the prince of and the power of hell to to blind them to god and the truth of his salvation through jesus christ and they have just lost their minds they they have believed the lie and they are so delusional uh, against God they cannot see the truth and it looks like everything's just gone mad but God is not going to do away with humanity because the cluster has gone sour because the cluster has 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 been overtaken with rot you know why because of the servant of God's sake. Now, this I believe is really talking about Jesus. He saved the world because of Christ. He did not throw the world away. He did not throw mankind away. He did not throw humanity away. I mean, he he did not give it up as a lost cause. But for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So he said there's a blessing in the cluster. The first thing I want to point out is that the servant here is mainly talking about Jesus who came to seek and to save that which was lost. Aren't you glad that, that he came to save the world from the judgment of God? And I want to tell you, even though we are seeing a lot of terrible, terrible things hit planet Earth, I mean, it has just seemingly been one thing after another, one disease after another, and this, this global pandemic kind of takes the cake. It kind of it kind of makes uh, the people of God who have always understood what the Word said stand up and, and look again at how close we are to the coming of the Lord. But listen to me. God has not is not done yet. He has not finished yet. Because God has a a a blessing in the earth called the sons and daughters of God who who have been saved by Jesus Christ God's son. He is holding off the worst. I mean, this world hasn't seen the worst yet. It's coming, but it's being held off. It's being it's, it's it, there is a there is a resistance from God in the earth working against the powers of hell from literally taking over complete control of everything. It is a it is the power of God's spirit in planet earth in the sons and daughters of God who have been born again through faith in Jesus name and his spirit resides in our life and and not only is Jesus the blessing in the cluster today what's holding back the total wrath and judgment of God that brings complete annihilation and calamity upon the face of the earth. I mean, one day there is going to be, I mean, it's, you'd think it's unhinged now. It's going to be an unhinging like the planet earth has never seen. I mean, it's going to 
cause the elements created by God to reel and to sway. It's going to be so bad. I mean, everything is going to become become uh, out of order and unhinged and in you think it's bad now it's just really you know it's not anything to what it's going to be well, well what's stopping that terrible awful judgment from hitting planet earth the the woes of revelation and the vile judgments and the trumpet judgments from being unleashed and I, and just totally wiping out most of the population of the earth called the great wine press and the great judgment of the lamb when he comes and and i mean he just rolls up his sleeves and begins to show planet earth really what bad times are i mean you don't want to be on the wrong side of god's judgment my friend if you if you have not been saved, you really need to give your heart and life to Jesus and become born again through faith in the blood of the Lamb. Because one day, everything's going to become unhinged and, and it's going to be too late for so many people. But that day has not yet happened. It has not come upon this earth. You know why? Because there's a blessing in this rotten world. The blessing of salvation upon the people of God. God's still saving. We are still living in the in the age of grace. And and the powers of God are are holding back the elements that are about to to literally come apart at the seams. Because God's still working and saving and delivering and and he will not allow the powers of hell to do what it really wants to do that will literally bring uh, the unreserved judgment of god upon planet earth god's holding the the powers of hell the wrath of satan back that his wrath may be held back because he has got precious precious grapes usable for the kingdom of God usable he wants to save the cluster that should be just pruned and cast away because among the hum human population there are many many people who have have turned to God and there are many more that are going to turn to God and he sees that great latter day harvest they may not be uh, saved yet but they're going to turn to God and God is going to to pour out his grace in an unprecedented measure once again on planet earth and we're going to see a great harvest of the Lord and so he says I will not destroy them all and we're seeing a lot of destruction we're seeing a lot of death a lot of suffering but it's not going to happen to the extreme it's not it's, it, it we're getting close but we're not there yet and god is holding it off from what it could be because he does not want the entire uh face of the earth to be destroyed because it's not time for it yet for there is a blessing in the earth there are people not only that have been saved but are going to be saved in this last day outpouring of God's grace and mercy that that's going we're going to see by the hand of God by the saving grace of God millions swept into the kingdom of God born again by the grace and mercy of God filled with the spirit of God and we're going to see earth's greatest revival i believe is still yet to come uh, but we're getting close to the end and God is going to work a miraculous work in the midst of this rotten uh, cluster that the Bible talks about here in Isaiah 65. There is a blessing on planet earth. There, there is a blessing in the midst of the rottenness 
and the spoil and the and the worthlessness and the darkness. I tell you, don't lose heart, my friend. If you are a child of God, he says, for my servant's sake, I am going to search for the blessings and I'm not going to destroy them all, but I am going to search for those that I can snatch out uh, like these few little grapes amidst a giant cluster of rotten grapes. God's going to spare that whole cluster that should be discarded because there's a few still in that cluster that are precious and that are servants and that have turned their heart to God and believed the Lord for still an outpouring and merciful outpouring of His grace upon the the face of this earth in these last days. Oh, praise the Lord. I thank God for that promise that He has given us through faith in Jesus Christ. So, what does it say? Don't panic. Don't lose heart. Take courage. Because just like God told Abraham, when He turned His face, the angels turned their face towards the wicked city of Sodom, and, and Abraham said, if you can find 50, will you destroy it? With 50 people there, there the, in all of the wickedness, and all the multitudes of people that are doing wickedly in Sodom and Gomorrah, but if there's 50 there that have turned their heart to God and accepted by faith His righteousness, will you destroy the fifty with all the unright? He said, I'll spare the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah for the fifty's sake. Well, Abraham went on down the line, and in, in Genesis 18, uh, he said, well, what if there's not fifty? And he went all the way down to ten, and he said, if there's not but ten there, if there's not but ten there that are blessed by the grace and mercy of God, that have turned their heart to the Lord and have, have believed in His grace and mercy for their life, they're yours, Lord. They're the righteous of God. Will you destroy the whole city? Even if there's not but ten, he said, I'll spare this rotten cluster of iniquity and ungodliness, this, this stench of humanity that I see the wickedness has come up before me and I can't hardly bear to look at it. But if there is ten that are living for God there, if I can find ten, there will be a blessing in that city that will, that will spare that whole city. If there's only ten there that I can find that are righteous before God. Wow. When he got there, he couldn't find ten, and he had to destroy the city. But he rescued Lot and his wife. And Lot tried to get his son-in-laws, who were married to his daughters, out of the city. But they had been so corrupted by the city, they wouldn't go. They wouldn't, they wouldn't leave. And the angels took Lot by the hand and pulled him out of that city because... They, they were not to be destroyed with that city. The blessing of Lot. God spared Lot and his wife and his daughters. And you know the story of his wife. She went out but turned around to look at that city when judgment was falling. Her heart, she was on the outside, but her heart was still on the inside. And she turned into a, to a pillar of salt. And Lot and his two daughters were the only ones spared. Wow, what a story. But you see the power of the blessings that God has placed upon our life. The blessing of salvation. He would have preserved that whole town if he could have found ten in that whole cluster of wicked, rotten humanity. If he could have found ten... He would have spared that whole city. Wow, what a powerful statement. Well, he says it again in Romans 9. Romans 9, verse 22. He says, What if God, willing to show His wrath... Listen, He's ready to, 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 to uh, execute wrath and, and begin to extend His arm of wrath and to make 
his power known, speaking of his wrath, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction. He says, what if God willing, ready and willing to pour out his wrath and just wipe out a whole uh, uh, race of people or a whole uh, group of people? He said, endured with much long suffering. In other words, stopped his wrath stop the power of destruction, even though there were people, many, 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 many people there that, like this cluster of rotten grapes, that were worthy of destruction, yet he halted it, held it back, because he's a God of long-suffering, he's a patient God. Verse 23, and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy. He said, I'm not going to pour out my wrath upon this cluster. I'm not going to throw the whole bunch away. I'm going to spare those who are here called vessels of mercy, who have turned their heart towards God and pled the blood of Jesus over their life and over their sins and turned their heart to God. The Bible says because he wanted to make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy which he had afore prepared unto glory. Even us, he says, whom he hath called not of the Jews only but also of the Gentiles. And listen in verse 25. As he saith also of Jose, is that word there, O-C, Jose, I will call them my people, which were not my people, and her beloved, which was not beloved. He says, I'm going to save a whole bunch of people that did not even know me when I made this statement. And he says, and it shall come to pass that in the place where I said unto them, you are not my people, there shall they be called the children of the living God. Oh, praise the Lord. Can anybody just lift up their hands who, are, who is saved, who, who haven't always been a Christian, haven't always known the Lord. Maybe you weren't raised in a Christian home, but you found the Lord and you're saved and now you're called the children of the Most High God. I thank God today that He didn't throw the cluster away and just annihilate every Everybody because he saw me. He saw a blessing, the blessing that I could be through Jesus Christ, uh, something usable for God. And he plucked me out right out of the midst of the stench of sin and ungodliness and destruction that I was caught up in and darkness because of, uh, of the devil and the bondage of sin that he that had a hold of my life. And he saw me when I cried out. And I, I turned my face to God, and He plucked me right out of destruction. And I thank God that He saw that in you and saw that in so many others that have turned their heart to God. Oh, hallelujah. We have power with God. So take heart, because God's not going to just wipe us all away with all the others who are rebelling against God. Yeah, it, it, you say it's a wonder God doesn't just wipe us off the face of the earth. Well, you know, I thought that myself, but He's not. He's not. You know why? Because there's still people calling on the name of the Lord. There's, he's got children on the face of this earth that are calling for God's mercy, for His wrath to be stayed, and for His judgment to be held back, and for the wrath of the enemy and the powers of hell to be, to be held off and to be pushed back. Because God's still got work to do. He's still got people that He wants to see saved, and He wants to use us to reach them. Oh, praise the Lord. Well, I hope you've received encouragement from this this scripture and and this message today the blessing is in the cluster i want to tell you if you know the lord today you're the blessing in the cluster god's not going to throw the whole 
thing away. He's not going to destroy us all with the rest of, of humanity that has turned their back on God. He's not. He has got a blessing for you today. Take heart. And if you don't know the Lord, you can know Him. Just call on the name of the Lord and you will be saved. He will save you, sanctify you. He'll fill you with the sweet Holy Ghost and He'll write your name in the Lamb's book of life. You can know that you know that you know that you're going to go to heaven when Jesus comes or calls. You can know that by witness of the Holy Spirit. And you don't have to be afraid because you can be a part of that blessing in the cluster. Hallelujah. I hope this has touched your heart today. Thank you for joining us.